G'day folks and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and I'm creating an adventure along with Lena here. Hi guys, this is a video from Matt's YouTube channel where we are together and I'm reposting it on my channel. This is episode 6 about ghost elves and if you have seen it, please forgive me for spamming you. But if you haven't seen it, check out his YouTube channel and I'll leave the links below and we're illustrating it as we go. This episode is going to introduce you to the ghost elves, the race that might take you deep into the old swamp. Today we have a special guest, my partner Lena, who's been helping me world build and illustrate, and I've given her a task to create a new faction. And she's been doing that, and what we're going to do is get Lena to tell us what she's doing and show you what she's been doing and it's going to blow your mind. So no pressure, Lena. <laughs> so tell me how um, you dealt with creating something in my world where you know I get very protective of my ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Matt has been developing this world for many years, 10, 15, I don't know, and swamp area is only a tiny part of it. Um, I try to be sensitive to every, everything I do inside it. And even though um, Matt gave me complete creative freedom uh, to design ghost elves the way I want, I still know that there is uh, a bigger picture that I don't really know. And so it's somewhere here. And um, because Matt think that it's kind of obvious, but it's not because I don't read his thought necessarily, not always at least. Most of the time. I, I just try to be, um, to come up with ideas and then, you know, if they don't work, just let them go. Um, and not worry about no, not being attached to them necessarily. And it, it helps to be, uh, to have a ground in advertising because, um, in advertising you come up constantly with hundreds of ideas and they go nowhere they're just being killed and you kind of get used to it and you're not feeling as, as precious about it so um with, go with ghost elves i'm trying to be the same and not being too precious about my ideas but the cool thing about the um ghost elves is that they are isolate, isolated from everything else and um, they are almost the world inside the world because they're not interacting too much with the rest of the swamp and they want it to be this way so because of this it kind of gives me a little bit of freedom at least <laughs> well yeah that's so true because they're like a self-contained little world that even if you come up with wild and crazy ideas it doesn't sort of impact say the Erin folk or yeah. uh, other creatures out there because they're such a shy reclusive race that have developed on their own. There's really two factions of the ghost elves you've developed. There's like the refugees that have been pushed out of the old swamp and are starting almost a new life and world in the young swamp but there's leftovers in the old swamp and we're not going to tell you about them yet uh, that's going to be coming up. Lena's still developing them. We're coming up with some really cool mechanics on how players can learn the shamanistic ways, but they risk taking in this corruption. But do they push? Do they push their luck and see if they can gain these abilities to see further into the swamp? Or do they become corrupted themselves? So we've got a cool mechanic for that. But this episode, we're going to talk about the elves in the young swamp, which are more sort of the youngsters looking back on the old ways and almost rejecting them, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now I talk again. <laughs> Elaborate. I mean, we've actually developed one specific NPC that the party could interact with that sort of is a represented, representation of this uh, bridge between the old ways and the new ways. So we haven't named her yet, if anyone in the channel comes up with a name. Okay. okay. But we'll okay. tell you a bit about her first. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. <laughs> This girl, she feels uh, that she uh, definitely feels the calling for shaman, but the whole shaman culture has been lost because it's been uh, left behind um, in the old swamp, corrupted swamp. And shamans 
um, were not able to move out of the old swarm for the reason that I won't tell you for now. So she's trying to find a way to get back to the old swarm to find the uh, shamans that legends say still exist even though the um, tribe left uh, the old swarm a few hundred years ago. But no? <laughs> this, yeah. this is where, this is where <laughs> the problem comes yeah. because I'm like, 200 too much? <laughs> but, well, like corruption's been much. around a hundred years. Okay. Um, so there'd be a bit yeah. of a migration where they tried to stay, the corruption spread, uh, and there was maybe a huge backstory where the old and the new clashed and some said, ah, I'm going, I'm leaving, yeah. and others said, we're staying and we're going to make it right, and there was a lot of resentment because they felt abandoned yeah. in the old swamp, and these new ones now have turned their back on the people in the old swamp. Um, but yeah, as you say, she wants to get back there, and she's one of these headstrong characters that is pushing her luck basically with this new tribe. Um, she has got some contacts in there. She's uh, got some old people that support her, but largely the old people have been almost dismissed as in the past, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And the, uh, the, the legends say that the um, shamans, they're immortal, but of course no one believes this rubbish. So, um, she eventually invite, um, might invite uh, the party back to the village to meet her grandfather. He's a bit of a character. Yeah. And he's got my legs. They were used <laughs> as reference. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, he's pretty cool. Um, also, to note, is this ghost elf village you've concepted some stuff out for that so oh, yeah. yeah we'll show you that this these villages exist in the treetops and lena did a lot of work on figuring out how the ghost elves get around in the canopies and she's designed these villages which we'll show you and there's going to be remnants of these villages in the old swamp which you might mm. might notice in one of our little video clips uh, that lena did in vr by the way she's uh, taught herself virtual reality and hand painted all these scenes in vr so she can walk around in them to create these amazing uh, villages and give us a great concept on how everything fits together so when you were designing the ghost elves what kind of things did you take into account and have to think about in terms of say how they function and work in a in a canopy type environment when uh, Matt gave me ghost elves to design, what I started from is the environment. And uh, first I actually started drawing the environment pieces to try to envision how they live and where they live. And um, build those, how they build those three, house, three houses and how they what they do to survive in this harsh environment and uh, things like that. So, and only after that, I started to go backwards to the characters and thinking, how would that environment force them to look like as well? And uh, what I was thinking, they need to be really good climbers. So I added some clothes on their um, uh, fingers and toes. <laughs> In Russia, they call both of them fingers. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I need to remember to so call toes. them toes, not fingers. Yes. And I wanted them to also look quite cat-like, which I'm still working on. Mm. Uh, so they climb very easy to jump and feel also very athletic, very yeah. um, strong. And you're giving the hair like a oh, mane-like yeah. quality That's and right. stuff like that. That's uh, right. Yeah. Which uh, ties really well into that. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of wanted all this line feeling to to them as well. So, so how do you see these ghost owls interacting with the world around them and um, dealing with this corruption and in this young swamp? How do they still survive in this area? So it's just comes naturally for me to think of um, what's behind all, all the um, sort of ways of living and uh, what I see is that they have sort of philosophy that they believe 
in the balance of all things so they want they don't want to judge as something being good bad wrong right they think that everything uh, that lives in the swamp survives only in the balance and that's why uh, i think I, i'm going to talk about it more when i come to um, uh, crocodile hunters but um, they treat all the creatures with respect and um, that's how that affects all all the things they do how they farm how they live how they treat animals creatures um, plants it's a, a shamanistic almost way of living isn't it um, yeah where they see everything as balanced and i think crocodiles are a great um point they don't see them as evil or bad they pay them the ultimate respect and yeah. uh, have a whole philosophy around dealing with them and hunting them and um yeah which is really cool episode two on that let's talk a little bit about how the farmers and fishermen work because they've got a almost cool mechanic because they're dealing with not only fishing but fungus and algae and stuff down within the swamp right so yeah so because they live in the canopies uh everything is around their fishing farming or anything to do with food gathering is connected to climbing up the trees and down so they use uh the vines so the trees has um the kind of like a structure that that uh the vines grow from all the branches to create support extra support for the uh, branches of giant trees and that's also the swines are also used for building the houses so you might have seen those tribes that use them to build the bridges which i use as a reference as an inspiration as well so the the cool thing about it is that the longer this bridge exists the stronger it becomes because branches grow stronger and stronger and they become unbreakable and it's kind of the opposite to what we humans do because it kind of goes the other way around so um, they use those wines to build bridges to climb to do everything anything and for them it's also they um, worship those trees in a way uh, so they have face paint i forgot about this the face paint uh not only face paint but also body paint and sometimes they cover themselves with a pattern that reminds uh, um, resembles the the lines the lines on their body to connect almost the visual with their their beliefs and ideas so to go down the um, swamp they use those wines a lot as you can see in the pictures and they also build those bridges so i used a lot of the um, existing cultures to draw this um, inspiration from this amazing people who live in the forests and uh, thrive there as well with the uh, uh, face paint I I really like I really like those face paint you know you just see those images on Pinterest and I love those um, but um, what I was thinking what is the reason behind all this fun looking stuff and uh, um, so we, we come up with the idea that they're using a special berry that grows deep in the um, swamp that's called um, fog, blooming, blooming fog, blooming fog, I think. Language. <laughs> um, this berry uh, allows to um, uh, give some protection to the um, ghost elves as well as other creatures who knows about it. And um, it can be prepared, which I talk about. Uh, later on in the next video but uh specific specific way but it also can be just the juice can be put on the surface of your skin and it almost works like um um nicotine patch yeah. so they 
the skin absorbs the uh, elements from the, the juice, but it's not, it's protecting from some toxic stuff that uh, those berries consist. So that's kind of the, what, that's an example of how the visuals drive the ideas and that creates the whole other things around it. Yeah, and I've found that a lot, not only with um, drawing a concept and thinking, oh, what I had in my head isn't cool, how do I make it cooler? And then you add things and then you're suddenly creating a whole new element. But I found it with maps as well. So with people who aren't as, say, creative drawing, um, I still say develop a map of your village, like say Roost, and that just starts to generate ideas of what should go in this space, why would these people gather here, uh, what dictates that. We basically work in reverse. We try to create cool things by illustration, then think, okay, how can that work in the world? Um, which I think is a pretty cool pro process. Yeah, well, we kind of work both ways, of course, as mm. well. Uh, and uh, sometimes ideas drive the, first of all, ideas drive the visuals. Yeah. But then if those visuals don't match to what we see in our head, then that needs to be adapted and changed. Yeah. And with an image, there's just so much more to talk about as well. We'll look yeah. at it and think, oh, why, why is this? Why have these lizard people got blue scales and the other yeah. ones got red? And, and yeah. uh, what when you design a plant that might be uh, halfway up a tree, we'll almost come up with an idea of how do ghost owls deal with this? How do they get that? And uh, yeah, just starts a discussion, starts generating ideas. So yeah, big recommendation, sketch out everything. Even if you're not a good artist, sketch it out and it'll generate ideas and uh, help you with your world building. Yeah, and uh, practice is the main thing anyway. So. Uh, doesn't matter how good we are, we still have to practice and that's how we improve anyway. Yeah, and grow really old. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you very much for hanging out with us and meeting Lena. Thank you for joining us, Lena. Awesome. Um, lots of details in the description below on how you can follow us when we come out at Kickstarter. We've got our own website where we write these up and include the artwork. And I'm going to leave a link to Lena's portfolio because she's done a lot of work for our past adventures where you can see art process there. And she's working on her own projects as well, which she can go into more detail on her channel. Yeah, well, eventually I will, but yeah. not, not having time at the moment to, yeah, to do any of it. But yeah. I will. You will? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. See ya.